course it's not cat litter. These things make really good unopenable for rodents and such um, bird seed holders. I really like using them for that. Good morning. What you doing, puppers? Did you go for a walk? Did you go for a walk? Did you have a good time? So I have not done a garden update in maybe a month, maybe a little more, but there's lots happening. We're transitioning into the fall. And I'm gonna show you everything that's happening with the garden. Hey, I found a puppy in the garden. Hey, look, we have pumpkins and they're pretty much mature. Rascal keeps trying to help weed through here, but it's almost impossible. He tries real hard though. Don't you buddy? <laughs> so typical signs of fall, things are starting to get a little browner, a little more yellow. The bees, if I have one in here, they'll have a tendency to gather up. See how they're gathering up in here? They're always looking Hmm, for the next bite. And in the fall, they get a little frantic because they know they're almost at the end of their journey. There are still flowers in here. Believe it or not, the flowers have done remarkably well, even with all of <laughs> the pumpkins. And this pumpkin is huge. There's another pumpkin that's on the outside, and then I've got like two more coming. But yeah, in the fall, you're gonna have a tendency to see a lot of bees grouping together, most of them, because the flowers are fewer. You're gonna see more than one bee desperately grabbing as much pollen as it can. Because fall's coming. So we had a little volunteer. This was not planted and it's got some cherry tomatoes on it. Everything kind of bounced back. And then we got 100 degree days back to back to back. Like the last two weeks have been nothing but 98 to 105 degree days. So watering has been a bit of a chore. More bees in there, kind of neat. And they're just doing everything they can. Just gonna walk you guys around real quick and show you what's going on. So here is the other pumpkin. And I would say that this is more of a gourd. They're really cool looking. And then the, my standard pumpkins are over there and I've got three of them. The butterfly bush is still doing well and attracting hummingbirds and butterflies like it should. It's really pretty and it got huge it got really big this year and it's still these things have survived incredibly well with the pumpkins kind of taking over everything uh, obviously lesson learned would not be <laughs> would not be doing a pumpkin this close I had a couple of pumpkins rot and instead of chopping them when they started to sprout I'm like oh how cute we'll just have some pumpkins here I've got some little volunteers for spider plants coming up, up back here and they're ready for another pot. They'll come in this winter. Little volunteer bean again. And then this is an olive tree. This is a green olive tree. They're very hardy. They can take heat. Um, some dill, got some dill going on. That smells wonderful. And yeah, fall transition. The cactus. Look at look at all the little shoots that the cactus has put out. <laughs> it 
So these will get huge if I let them. They're slow growers, but it seems to really like this and it's really loving the heat. All the spider plants have done really, really well. And I've transplanted a bunch of babies, but they'll just keep popping out more babies from the parent plant if I let them. Volunteers growing out of the bird feeder or bird house kind of, I think. So back on the patio, the lavender is doing really well. These have, I'm not sure what these are. I should know better by now, but they're kind of dying out. The mint has all started to flower and blossom. Um, I've been cutting these, so they've kind of bushed out. This is one of three or four basil, sweet basils that I've got. There's more basil in here and back there. And then I've got more dill too. I did see it the other day. It is, there it is. <laughs> Cleverly disguised as a pumpkin. So lots more dill and they have cousins. These guys do that, um, that look like dill, but they're incredibly painful and will give you a rash if you see them in the wild. So know what your plants are. So these guys are still doing good. The begonias, we've got so much going on under here. The salvia is doing really well. And again, I say for this time of the year, um, so sunflowers are done, but I've got more sunflowers over there I'm gonna show you guys. But just a quick walk around. What I was excited about when I was on the other side is that this is a little air plant I got at Longwood Gardens. And this was just about dead at Lowe's for like 50 cents. And they've come back and there's new leaves. The succulents are gonna get repotted um, probably today before it rains or tonight. So we've got rain finally, finally, finally after a few weeks, we've got rain coming our way which is good. We need it. The Italian flat leaf parsley is doing really great. I gave everything a good soak this morning. This one, I'm not sure what happened. Um, I might have a couple of good little stems that I can root somewhere else. But this little plant, I don't know if it slugs got to it or, or what, but it took a beating. It's the only one that did. The rest of the succulents are doing really well. And I love succulents and cactus and stuff. So let's go to the garden. One of the last flowers that's blooming. This hibiscus has done well. This is the spider plant that's just kept having babies all year. This thing is tall. I don't know what this is called. Mom probably knows. We both got one or a couple of these. And um, this is about two and a half, three feet tall now. The vink is doing really well. And in the evenings, when the sun's setting on the other side of the house, the hummingbirds come and they grab all the nectar out of these guys. I've got this and then I've got the one over here that's pink used to have white ones, but it didn't attract the hummingbirds like I thought it would. It's in here. There it is. <laughs> I don't know if it's enough to attract the great pumpkin, though. I think Linus would be disappointed in me. But yeah, um, not being able to weed eat this or cut it effectively this year has been a little concerning. Not too bad. Moving on. So what you're seeing is tomato plants that are being supported and almost overgrown. I would say probably overgrown by morning glory, but they have a good relationship. They hold each other up and morning glory as tall as it gets. Hey, there's a sunflower back here, but the morning glory actually is pretty rigid and strong. Yeah, I've been killing hornworms. It's that time of year. They're almost too hard to control this time of year. There's so many of them. Um, but I've been doing it the best I can. 
but the tomatoes have bounced back. So I've got these guys coming, these guys, those guys. Um, I saw some more cherries that I need to pick around here. And more tomatoes here. But um, at some point I will finish that sentence, yes. The morning glory has actually helped the tomatoes go through it and get tall, which is kind of awesome. They haven't really starved the light out of them, which I thought they might, but they didn't. Oh, that's got a little bite, which means somewhere on here is probably, there you are. I knew it. See how hard it is to figure these guys out? You are evil. Sorry. The only good hornworm is a dead one. Here's some more grape tomatoes that are almost ready. And while it's not the bumper crop I was hoping for, I think as a first year non-container exclusive gardener, um, I've learned some really valuable lessons and I've adjusted enough to where I've been able to recover some stuff. And it wasn't easy. Like I had to throw the book out and rewrite it and watch videos and all kinds of cool stuff. Anything that's been encouraging pollinators to come in um, is a good thing. Well, we've got a cucumber. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is past ripe. It's not past ripe, but um, yeah. So if my cousin Christine watches this, uh, this is about the size you would see in a store but the ones in the stores are all waxy and green and dark green. That's just because they're loaded with chemicals. This is what a natural one is supposed to look like. Maybe a shade greener, but this is totally edible and very woody. And most of them start out like this and then they just get, they get fat. If you go through really hot, dry spells, uh, occasionally they'll turn into these guys, which you don't want. That's where part of it grows and part of it stops growing. And then the bottom of it gets kind of brown and mushy and then you lose your cucumber. And if you see those, just go ahead and pop them off. Let them drop down. And if there's any seeds, if you're gonna cover it or make additional mulch out of it, this is a healthy one, right next to one that's not. So. This one is doing good. This one is not. So if you have anything that starts out and then immediately gets yellow, a lot of times that's bottom rot, blossom rot. There's a couple of different things. It could be dehydrated. We'll see how it stains up real, real quick. Just pop those off. Hmm. Lots of bees still, which is good. The more we can give them to pollinate, the better off. But yeah, there's, there's still good stuff happening here. So I'm still hopeful. The squash is pretty much finished. Um, I got a total of, well, this one might do something here. Uh, I got a total of eight squashes, but you can see the other enemy, these guys. And they're terrible. These are squash bugs, stink bugs, call them what you want. They're not good not good for the plant. They eat it from the tube out. They do smell, um, but it is what it is. You got to kill them. But again, it gets so tough this time of year to control it because they're just everywhere. But you know, it's summer's dying down. This has been a really good yield for me this year. And the cucumbers are still going crazy. And also, if you see that blossom hanging on, go ahead and pop that off. They need it for a little bit, but in another day, if it doesn't drop off, go ahead and pull it. Here's another one that's doing well. 
there's a few that are doing pretty good. And you really sometimes have to hunt for it because I missed this and it was right in front of my face. Beans. Beans and butterfly bushes. So this has had a huge rebound. There were two or three rows in here and I've already picked and pulled and let some die off here. Um, just bushels and bushels of beans this year. We did really good. Here's, here's some bean. And it looks like these guys are gonna yield me some more, which I wasn't expecting. But they're continuing to flower. And I think that's pretty cool. Got a pepper that's coming in. Right there. Lots of cobwebs, y'all. Can always tell the fall by the cobwebs. Here's another one. Another pepper. Two more peppers back here. You can see that. So yeah, overall, um, I would probably give myself a 60% on the year, which is just above failing because I have had to learn so much. For an example, here's them living together well. This is pulling the tomato plant up. It's still able to get to the sunshine and there's <laughs> sunflowers in here too. But you can see that these leaves are incredibly healthy. Uh, probably too much shade. Tomatoes really like heat and sunshine. The rosemary is growing really well. So yeah, didn't fail, but I wouldn't necessarily say that I did really well either. Huge learning curve. Um, this needs to probably have soil up to that level here. So like another foot and a half, 18 inches of soil on this side. That side's a little bit deeper. Um, but hindsight's 2020. Next year will be better than this year. And I think that's part of it too. If you come in really expecting to be a winner on the first year, um, life tells you otherwise sometimes. You just have to keep at it. Just like with anything, right? But I'm excited. Um, we've had some good stuff. So overall, I'm happy about what happened with the garden this year. And we've still got stuff that's coming out for us. So not bad. That's what I've got, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this little at home with Jekyll. The Jekyll backyard segment. Oh, look, I've got some more. And see, those are round. That's another classic tell that they haven't gotten as much water as they've needed. And I have been watering, but I'm always scared to death to overwater. Here's mom's um, heirloom black beans. I've gotten a good yield off of these. I'm gonna save some for seeds. But they're good. Mm, they're so good. Mmm, coffee. Oh, it's so good. Cobwebs, y'all. Fall's coming. No, I said fall's coming. There's nobody at the door. Just my laundry. They get very excited when fall's coming. Is fall coming? I know. It's not there.